So do I pay off my student loan, my car loan, or my mortgage loan first, you know, when it comes to leveraging the Velocity Banking strategy? That's a great question, okay? And this one is uh, hot off the presses uh, in the comment section here. One of our subscribers reached out with this specific question, so we're gonna tackle it right now in today's training. Hey everyone, it's Mike Adams, and on this channel, we empower individuals to achieve freedom through improved financial literacy and business ownership. If you are new to this channel, make sure to click subscribe and click the bell, okay? So that way you get notified on any and all of our future content. So in today's video, we're going to be answering a question that came in from one of our viewers uh, on one of the videos in the comments section. And guys, keep those questions coming. And as you guys know, I love answering those questions. And, and really guys, just keep them coming. You know, the goal is clarity. You know, the goal is uh, achieving a, a greater level of financial literacy. And in these times, you know, now more so than ever, um, it's very it's very important to just understand what's going on you know, with the banks, what's going on with the government, what's going on with with interest, what's going on with taxes. It's just very very important right now to at least you know not that you have to have it all mastered, but certainly have a baseline um, on financial literacy so that way you can navigate some of these turbulent waters. So again, as you guys have questions about anything you've seen on this channel, get those in the comments. We'll make a video just like this to answer your question. Um, but today's question uh, really boils down to uh, really ironing out which debt to pay off first uh, when it comes to attacking your loans using a strategy like Velocity Banking. And so here we go. We got uh, Jay Garcia and he's asking, do I start paying my 40K car loan with a $750 per month uh, payment or my mortgage you know, um, first uh, using this method? Okay, so his question is between, you know, the car and the mortgage and, you know, and based on speaking with uh, tons of clients on the phone now, there's really like this uh, uh, loan trio of terror. Okay, so we got the mortgage loan, we got the student loan, and then we got an auto loan usually. And so it's usually uh, the three. Uh, so in this scenario, we got the two, but you know they're really interchangeable in this scenario, whether you got two or three or four or 10 or 15 different loans, there is a way to organize them. You know, So that way you're paying them off in the right order and in the most efficient way, so that way you can get the best results, okay? And we did a video on this a while back where I discussed um, several um, different methods that somebody can use, okay? Because um, based on somebody's goals, based on how somebody's wired uh, as, as, as a person. Different, there are, again, there are different ways that you can rank the debts. You know, for example, you could use like, uh, you know, the old Dave Ramsey, you know, debt snowball. And, and that is really, really good for individuals that, you know, really need a quick win, right, to keep going. You know, and, and, and you know who you are, right? You know, there, there's some folks out there that, you know, if they're not seeing some results pretty quick, you know, it's easy for them to, you know, quit and throw in the towel. So if that's somebody's wiring, um, you know, and, and you want somebody to make progress, you know, I might lean towards, you know, a debt snowball for somebody. But again, that just depends on how the person is wired, okay? If somebody is, you know, you're here on this channel, you're looking for some, you know, next level kind of techniques, you're looking to take control uh, of your financial literacy and of your game, other, other methods you can use. You know, your financial planner or financial advisor might advise you to you know, rank them based on the interest rate, you know, tackle the highest interest rate uh, debt first versus, you know, with the snowball, it's going by the lowest balance with the, you know, debt avalanche, um, you know, that's again, where they're attacking the interest first. So, you know, some people would, would lean towards that and, and really, and we did an analysis on this where we broke those two methods down and, you know, the avalanche will actually save you some interest um, versus the snowball but again um you know a lot of times the highest interest loan might be a larger debt meaning a longer payoff so you don't get that quick win so again it depends on the person which one's right the one that i really just go to every single time as a business owner and as an entrepreneur um, i'm always thinking about cash flow right and, and you've seen the videos uh, on this channel where we talk about the power a positive cash flow and having as much as humanly possible. And when you have a, when you have more positive cash flow, you know if you're paying off debt, it gets paid off a lot quicker when you have more positive cash flow. And so my preferred method for ranking the debts is to use what's called the cash flow index. Okay, 
And so what you do is you take the balance of your loan and you divide it by the monthly payment on that loan. Okay, so let's use this example here. Let me pull out the old trusty uh, calculator. Okay, so we got, there we go. Let's pull this bad boy out. Okay, so we got a 40,000, okay, uh, a car loan here, and then divided by the $750 payment. And that's gonna give us a cash flow index score of 53, okay? And what we like, and what this is really measuring, uh, the cash flow index, is the efficiency of the loan, right? Is this loan um, payment versus balance a big drag on your cash flow, okay? And so if a loan has a cash flow index score of over 100, that would be a pretty efficient loan. You know, that's a loan where you got a pretty, you know, small uh, size payment in comparison to how much of a balance you're actually parking there in that particular debt. With a debt that's closer to a 50, um, that's where it's kind of getting towards inefficient, okay? And then from there, anything below 50 on a cash flow index is a very inefficient debt. And what we want to do is we want to get rid of the, if it, the lower the cash flow index score, that is the, the lowest one is the one you want to pay off first that's <laughs> okay wow that, that was kind of tough to spit out tonight but um the, the the loan that you have with the lowest cash flow index score would be the one that you would pay off first so again without having any additional information about your mortgage it's hard to say which one you'd want to pay off first but certainly knowing that this particular loan is a 53 um you know if you do have a mortgage Okay, chances are your mortgage is going to have a, a, a higher cash flow index score than this. Uh, again, depending on the mortgage. Uh, for example, let me just use an example mortgage to compare this to. But let's say you had um, a $300,000 mortgage. Actually, no, let's go easy. So let's say you had a $200,000 mortgage and you have a $1,200 mortgage payment, okay? Look at that. You know, we have a cash flow index score of 166, right? And think about that. I mean, you're, you're parking $200,000 worth of debt, right? And it's only costing you, you know, 1,200 bucks. Now, regardless of the length of the loan, regardless of anything, we're just comparing the payment to the balance. What's it costing us to park that debt, right? And here with a very high 166, this is a pretty efficient loan, right? So if these were your two debts, like if this was your mortgage, you would then pay, definitely want to pay off the car loan first because the loan is less, less efficient and it's a, a higher drag on your cash flow. And if you were to go apples to apples, right? And to give you just kind of a clean comparison here, um, you know, you're parking a $200,000 debt and it's costing you $1,250 a month, right? If you were to take the terms of this car loan, right, um, 40,000 times five gives us our 200 grand. So five times the car balance of 40,000 would give us our 200 grand. You know, five times the 750 would give us a payment of $3,750. So if the terms of this car loan were compared apples to apples with the terms of the mortgage, you know, you'd have a $1,200 payment, which you have right now on your mortgage versus a 3750 payment to carry the same balance, right? Hopefully that's making sense. So again, if this was your mortgage or your mortgage is more efficient than your car loan, you're gonna probably wanna go with the car loan first. And based on you know what most people as far as terms have on their mortgages right now, just knowing that that car loan's around a 50, 53, uh, chances are that's probably gonna be the one that you're gonna pay off first. But again, run the numbers, run the analysis, rank them in order of cash flow index, and then you can determine which one to pay off first. So very good question. And hopefully you guys found value uh, in this training and in this walkthrough. And again, I love supporting you guys and helping you guys gain clarity on all the different you know teachings and trainings that we have available on this channel so feel free to reach out make sure to jump into the conversation if you watch a video you have a question get that question in the comments and we might just make a video just like this to answer your question so help me out guys with the youtube algorithm give this video a like okay and, uh, and really just smash that like button uh you know uh, until until it turns nice and blue and uh it lets the algorithm know that you like these kind of videos where i'm, where I'm really digging in and answering your guys's questions questions as they come in so if you give this video a like that would really help me out a lot it would really help me out to reach more people with our content but that's all for this training we'll see you in the next video